Hi everyone, it's Wynn. It's been uh, an interesting afternoon. I want to thank everyone who uh, provided information, wrote me messages, friends who texted me, um, everyone for uh, providing information on the couple of questions that we had this afternoon on a few boats, on the Hoodoo incident, on Jay Hawker, and a couple other things we've had going on. I want to apologize. I really try very hard to reply to every single comment or like every single comment and react to it. Uh, with the amount of things we had going on today, it's been tough for me to, to do all of those. I'm going to try to give a pretty brief up, update. Um, I, I would love to focus a little bit more on some individual fleet battles, and maybe we'll do that tomorrow morning. Um, but for now, what I'd like to do is just give another sort of general state of the state um, update. So we've had a couple of boats finish already. We have a few boats right now that are in the straits or on the way to the from the bridge uh, to the finish line. Now, the if you were watching earlier, um, you saw um, Arete and Il Mastro take forever, and Infant Diversion too, take forever to get from the bridge to the finish. I think that they average maybe two knots, something like that, for this little dash from the bridge to the finish. Um, poor guys. Clearly, that's gotten a lot better now. Um, and we have what's, I think... Uh, with some wind, a little bit of wind and some great boat speed, one heck of a little uh, <laughs> a little race going on here. Though the way the tracker reads right now, we've got one, two, three, four, a whole bunch of 70s lined up near the finish. Now, be careful when you look at this. The trackers are set so that they automatically set a ping when the boats pass under the bridge. And we're going to have hundreds of boats coming through the bridge. Okay, so I don't want people to be fooled here. So look at the time. You see it says 1856 CDT under position at, um, and that means that, so that's 656 central time. Now let's look at the next boat up. That was at 654 central time. So this boat, uh, Roxy, gets the bridge two minutes before Warpath got to the bridge. And going down the line, sorry, that was Roxy again. I can't quite get there. Stripes, I can't quite get them. They're in at 53, 51. That's the first one I've seen. 52 for Denali, uh, 53 for details, and 55, so that's the last one for blue. I, I just want everyone to be careful. We can take the tracker really literally, but there are some assumptions built into the tracker and some things built into the tracker. Be very careful with them. So what happened was we had an update at 1845, and then automatically all the trackers pinged and put an icon down when they went under the bridge because they're meant to do that. The next ping that we're going to have is going to be at... It should be any second, really. Um, and when we do that, I bet you we'll see these boats stretched out a little bit here. Um, you know, a third of the way, maybe half the way to the finish. The good news, though, is there is wind now in the straits. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Uh, so much for the brief update, right? The rest of this is really, really big picture, gang. I mean, we got boats trickling in down the straits. We've got a pile of boats, uh, just a complete pile of boats approaching Gray's Reef. And then we really have what I would call the main fleet kind of exiting the Manitous um, on their way, maybe, you know, less than halfway to Gray's Reef. So um, we still have sort of our slower boats and um, uh, our later section sitting back here behind Gray's Reef, sort of our last, last lights place boats are in Point Betsy. I did some fast mousing over the speeds here, and I think we've had wind speeds drop off a little bit. I'll show you in a second that I for certain think that we sort of had winds coming this way, straight out of the south for a lot part, um, a lot of the day today. I think for sure we're in more of a southwesterly right now. You can in fact see that because, let me just draw this for you. If you look here in the Manitou Passage, you can see boats on this jibe and on this jibe. And you know, when, when we just sort of figure out where that X meets is what the wind is coming from. And I'll show you that in the wind observations in a second. So these, these boats here look like they're going a little bit more downwind. And I see some evidence for that sort of in the boats that are farther up the, the fleet too. Um, just sort of, I'm just going to circle it, kind of highlight with my mouse. You see boats on opposite jibes here that are suggesting more of a southwesterly wind rather than a southerly wind that we've been seeing for a lot of the day. Uh, we got fly swatter one around the Manitous. Gotta love it. Hooray. Um, okay, so that's the general fleet. Uh, uh, what's going to happen to them next from a weather perspective is, I think, what is of interest here. And I've been talking about a front for a while. The front, I would say, we're like in a prefrontal situation now. It's kind of starting to pass. And um, earlier in the day, as I said, and I showed this, uh, this, these observations earlier in the day, we were seeing, especially here along the shore, a lot of dead south winds. These wind bars are pointing straight to the south. Now you can see as our low pressure and our front is approaching, I'll draw the front in a second, we're definitely more of a southwest kind of everywhere here, all the way up the lake. 
Um, the observations don't really show that big of a change up here in the um, in the Straits area, um, but I have seen some things on some of the NDs, NDBC sites, the data boy sites, to suggest that things are better. And clearly, the way the boats are moving, you're showing us that the the the, um, the winds are better. And things are picking up. So where is the front? I would say that we definitely see front right here, right somewhere in there. Uh, honestly, you see west winds on the shore. Um, I checked this boy right here. It's still southwest, so we know the front hasn't made it quite that far yet. So let's draw it kind of like this, maybe. And I see west winds down here and south winds down here. So I draw it somewhere around there is my guess. Um, getting closer and closer to the fleet, you can see that the wind is going to take a big right-hand shift on them. And what's going to happen is we're not going to see, we shouldn't see anyway, boats. Whoops. Excuse me for a second while I fix that. Um, what we're not going to see so much is boats going like on this jibe or this jibe. We're going to see everyone pretty much, I think, I think, heading this way, just sort of in a straight line this way. It should turn into a parade with the wind kind of back behind your beam a little bit. Um, we might see a couple of people jibe, especially if they sort of get stuck in here. Um, actually, that's wrong. If they, get, if they end up over here. Um, they might jibe because they need to work their way downwind. Um, but I really think that most of these boats um, with moderate winds from the northwest, we're going to be seeing kind of more of a parade. Okay, so speaking of the forecast, let me just kind of talk you through that and then we're done. The uh, current situation again, the rough frontal position is right about here. Um, this is sort of the wind situation as of now, more or less. Um, that's close to right. I mean, the front might be a little bit more this way, might be a little bit more that way, but it's not bad for a model forecast, right? And um, let's f go forward an hour here. So now we're at 3, uh, 3Z, so this is, I think, about 10 p uh, 9 p.m. Central. Uh, again, front progressing across the lake. You can see the shift into westerly winds over the center of the lake. Nice pressures up here on the shore where our fleet is. Just keep going forward. Front now has made it all across the lake as of 11 p.m. Um, we have some pressure starting to light up, lighten up here in the straits, five to 10 knots, uh, maybe five knots for some holes there. I'm hoping the model is not really accurate there. I don't know. Um, we could have some land breezes or something funny going on as the night wears on that could cancel off the gradients. People could really slow down. I'm hoping not. But the good news is if we can make it through that, I'm going to fast forward through a couple here. You see the winds reattach from the west, start to build through the straits. Um, this is by about one in the morning. There they build a little bit more, stabilize, build a little bit more. Now we're at about three in the morning, four in the morning. Now we have solid winds from the west at about 10 knots, right? 10 to 15. 15 knots. This is at about 7 o'clock in the morning tomorrow morning, um, 6 o'clock in the morning tomorrow morning. Um, and if I just keep on going out, maybe we see a little fade and build, but generally we're talking 10 to 15 knots out of the west. And even if you look over here through the straits, the winds have actually built a little stronger. Sometimes we get a situation where the wind geographically blowing through the straits will sort of get funneled through here and really get honking. And we'll see the boats jibing downwind, right? Just like we saw them some today um, to make it through the bridge, through the straits, and it's uh, it's pretty fun stuff um, if you're part of the race or watching the race. So there's only one more forecast, and it continues the same idea. So shift to west winds. I think we're going to see uh, a parade less jibing going out for the rest of the night. Potential for a period of light winds and then a build starting sort of mid um, uh, kind of after midnight. Uh, the winds are going to build into some, some pretty, pretty nice race. I really expect everyone to finish tomorrow. Let's hope everyone stays safe. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for listening to me. Have a great night.